time given to a specific battle at the very end, at the end of the tribulation period, when uh, enemies of the Antichrist descend on Israel, I think, to try to wrest Jerusalem and control of the world away from the Antichrist. There are definite antagonists, and the whole thing is named uh, for this hill I'm standing on. Har Megiddo is the mountain of uh, Megiddo, or uh, the archaeological tell here, which is fascinating in itself, a, a pile of 20 civilizations going back in time uh, to the Canaanite period and before, long before King Solomon, uh, where people lived here. This was the inspiration for the book, The Source, which uh, was widely read and is kind of a textbook on Middle Eastern archaeology. I'll show you on the map just where we're located, and I'll uh, refer to it again later. This is the uh, northern part of Israel, Galilee. Uh, Megiddo is right here. Uh, commanding the route that would come from the Haifa, which is a natural harbor, uh, people would cross the valley and could be viewed from Megiddo, you see. And on this side is the Sea of Galilee, and the distance across this flat valley is some 40 miles. It's not such a uh, hospitable place as it may seem. It's very hot here, but it is a place where you can bivouac a huge army a uh, staging area for an assault on southern Israel and Jerusalem, and I think that's going to be the idea. Uh, the antagonists are the king of the north and the south and the east, and uh, they bear some definition. The, the king of the north and south, I think, are close in neighbors of Israel, uh, Syria and the southern axis of Libya, Ethiopia, come to take a spoil. The major battles between the king of the east, who will bring a huge army, uh, astoundingly huge. When, when John wrote Revelation, I'm sure he, he had a question for God if, if the number's correct because he wrote 200,000 thousand men, which is 200 million men. And uh, through the ages, that number has been a puzzle, but it's not a puzzle anymore. Red China can mount an army of 200 million men, and I think that's what's going to happen. I think the king of the east is China. I think the motivation to attack Israel is that the Antichrist, who has uh, desecrated the temple and proclaimed himself the god of Israel, uh, is seen to be vulnerable uh, when the uh, people of Israel take the advice of Messiah and flee into the hills of Judea. Why, they will say, he's no god. Uh, they're not bowing down to him. And since he has control of the Western world through his ten-nation confederacy in Western Europe and perhaps the United States involved, like in NATO, since he has control of all that, if they conquer him, in effect, they've conquered the world. And I think that's the motivation for the attack of the uh, king of the east on Israel and the king of the north and south just ride in, typical of Syria and Libya, to try to take a spoil while the, the bigger guys are fighting. Uh, we find the scriptures describing Armageddon in uh, Revelation 16, and uh, the Lord's words are very clear. I read from uh, Revelation 16, 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And then a parenthetical verse, a last appeal to just believe and avoid this cataclysm. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And then on to the subject. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. That's this place. The Antichrist, I believe, is, is mounting a defense of Jerusalem from here or a preemptive attack against the armies of the king of the east at Armageddon. I think that it's necessary for him to gather his troops and stage this battle. Remember the 200 million men virtually march from China to Israel. The Euphrates River is said to dry uh, before their advance, and so they come, but they don't come all in the same hour. That's like moving the whole nation of, of America somewhere. Uh, they come and arrive and arrive and arrive, and, and some have raped and pillaged their way through uh, Iraq and Iran, and some have raped and pillaged their way through Afghanistan and come from a different area. But anyway, they all arrive at a target area where they can have food and water and level ground, which is Megiddo. And, and in classical times, that was the way it was done. Uh, this was the route across the Middle East for attackers from Egypt to attack Assyria, for attackers from Babylon to attack Egypt. Israel's difficult to cross. This is the convenient crossing point. And the Antichrist, I think, will bring down his confederacy from Europe and uh, land at Haifa and approach the valley from the west in order to try to disorganize the troops of the uh, king of the east before they can set out for Jerusalem. 
the kings of the north and south again ride in to take an opportunity. The battle's clarified in Daniel 11, uh, verse 36 to 45. Uh, Daniel saw very clearly uh, the antagonists and what it's all about. <clears throat> he says, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Of course, that's the Antichrist. And shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. This is language like he used in the 70 weeks of years prophecy in Daniel 9, 24 through 27. This is a, a restatement with details of that prophecy. Uh, verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Now, I want to talk about that because it's been used through the ages to say the Antichrist uh, must be a Jew. It says he won't regard the God, capital G, of his fathers. But if I take up the Hebrew Bible and I look at the same verse in the original, I find a suspicious mistranslation. In the Hebrew Bible, I read, Vial Elohe Avotav Lo Yavin. He will not regard the gods his fathers worshipped. That's quite different. It just said in the verse before, he, he magnifies himself above the God of gods. And it's just remarking that he's uh, not the same uh, idol worshipper his fathers were. And uh, certainly he is not Jewish because he has uh, more than one God and uh, doesn't even regard those very well. I'm saying that uh, it should say the gods of his fathers and because of this uh, early mistranslation, people have supposed the Antichrist would be Jewish. This is uh, not a good supposition at all. Uh, when he goes on to the uh, battle scriptures, I read from verse 40, and at that time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and many ships. And he shall enter into countries and shall overflow and pass over. <coughs> this, I think, precedes actual Armageddon. The Antichrist, having uh, conquered Israel, in effect, by, by going into the temple and taking control of it, now tries to expand, and especially at the northern front, the Golan, and the southern front, Egypt, reaching to Libya and Ethiopia, northern Africa, and the main continent of Africa, and that's given in high detail. He's on a campaign in his southern zone, in other words. Uh, as to Israel, it says, he shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. And then in verse 42, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. And he does well in Egypt, as we read on. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. In other words, he's about to enter Africa proper along the northern coast through Libya and down into the continent through Ethiopia when he gets bad news. Verse 44, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Uh, he gets news from Galilee that an enormous army is approaching from the north and from the east and, and seems to be uh, bivouacking at Armageddon, evidently for an attack on Jerusalem. And this is much more important than his consolidation of the southern front. And he is distracted and has to return. And he does do battle. It says, um, therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And then it reiterates, he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. That is, he has plants his rulership, his ruling house on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. And that is how uh, Daniel 11 concludes and it goes on to Daniel 12 about the salvation of the old covenant believers in the time of tribulation.